And see, here's the thing. Reasoning is the worst thing. It'll destroy you. Cause me a lot of pain. Cause me a lot of suffering. Cause of reasoning. And I'm here to tell you that you got to learn how to deal with that thing that's between your ears. Because that's the thing that messes you up. If Peter had reason on that boat, you don't tell me, Jesus, how I'm supposed to fish. I don't tell you how to saw a piece of wood or to hammer a nail. How you going to get off telling me how to run my business? You didn't use my boat all morning preaching out here. I ain't got time. Don't you know I got a problem? I got a financial issue going on here. I didn't catch no fish last night. And you trying to use my time. Don't you know I'm tired? I stayed up all night. Stayed up all night trying to fish, ain't caught nothing, and now you still want to be using me. I'm tired of you using me. Reason say, we don't need to let him use this boat no more. But Revelation say, launch out into the deep. What Peter going to choose? Let's go back to the scriptures where we go back here. Go back to Isaiah 48, where we are back there on Isaiah 48. I am the Lord that teaches thee. To profit. If you can ever get that through your head, that whatever God tells you to do, He's telling you how to profit. What is He telling you? He's telling you when He goes back there in Jeremiah 29 to 29, 11, He said, I got plans for you. I'm telling you what my plans are. See, you got to get a revelation of this that God is not going to tell you nothing to harm you. He's going to tell you stuff that's going to give you hope. He's going to tell you what you need to do that's going to give you a future. Peter, you ain't got no fish, but what I'm telling you is going to give you a future. What I'm telling you is a plan that I got for you to catch some fish. You got to hear me. Don't reason, Peter. Just get the revelation. Now, let's reason some more. We can understand that Peter got good reason not to listen, right? First of all, what I define for you, Peter is the fisherman in this boat. Jesus is not. Peter doesn't know nothing about Jesus. He doesn't know he's the son of God. All he knows is that he is a preacher. What Peter had to learn to do was to look beyond the preacher. And this is the stumbling block of half this congregation. You get caught up in Jim Lowe. And you don't need to be hearing Jim Lowe. You need to get the revelation from the Holy One who has the host of heaven to redeem you from your bondage, to take you out of captivity. You got to learn to look beyond this man who stands up here. You got to learn to look beyond every man who stands up in a pulpit and says he's preaching the word of God. Because a lot of them stand up here preaching the word of God, ain't preaching no word of God. They're preaching their philosophy, but you got to learn how to look beyond them. You got to stop putting them up on the pedestal. You got to realize that the only person belonging on the pedestal is Jesus Christ. You don't need to get caught up in me. Because when you get caught up in me, you get caught up on what I do, what I say, how I move, how I, how I might do, whether I, I, I show you my socks or whether I run or whether I shout or whether I sing. What's it, Motown? Or, you get caught up on that mess when you need to get revelation. And you need to know where your revelation comes from. All I can do is preach the broad word. Because watch Peter. When Jesus was speaking, let me show you how Peter could get offense at Jesus. He ain't got no money, first of all. Amen. Amen. Peter was experiencing a financial crisis. Where you get that from? He didn't catch no fish. Get the revelation of that. If he didn't catch no fish, he ain't got no money. Can you get the revelation of that? Yeah. Or is that just plain reason? You can reason that. He fished all night and he didn't catch nothing. So now, here's my point. Jesus 
got the audacity to sit down in this man's boat. The man didn't get no money last night. He got to pay them other fishermen. He hired folk to fish. They didn't catch nothing. So Peter didn't get no money to pay these dudes. He is at a deficit. He got to pay out money to them folk because the labor union ain't going to let Peter get by without paying them fishermen. Amen? Because they're going to go to Peter. My name is, is Thomas, and I'm labor union 733 of the fishermen of Galilee. And I deserve my pay. I worked eight hours last night, and I demand eight. Peter got the pay. And Jesus, sitting up on a boat, preaching. What preaching got to do with my financial situation? And let me tell you what Jesus probably preached. The gospel. What does that have to do with my situation? Don't you know I'm in debt? And you preaching the gospel. What's the gospel mean? What good news is it in me to catch, not catching no fish? That ain't no good news. You need to be talking about, I ain't got no fishes. You need to be talking about how I'm going to get me some fishes and get me some money. Don't be telling me about God love me. It don't look like God love me. I ain't got no money. Talk about God's love. Talk about God want to prosper me. It don't look like I'm prospering. Yeah. And you sitting on my boat. You telling me to launch out and waste some more of my time. You know what? I got half of mine to take you back to the show and kick your butt out this boat. Yeah. Telling me about good news. It ain't no good news around here. I done worked all night. Ain't caught a, and don't, don't that, now listen, now listen. Don't that sound just like you? What you doing up here preaching, Bishop? Talk about Peter in the boat. Talk about tithing. Do you not realize it's a recession going on out here? Do you not know I'm trying to hold on to my house? I got a mortgage. I got bills to pay. Gasoline going up. And you talking about good news. What you talking about good news? Ain't nothing good about this. I don't know where you live. You must live in a, in a bubble somewhere. Do you not know folk out here losing their job? Do you not know I'm trying to get food on my table? You talking about getting 10% to God? Yes. Yes. That don't make no sense. Yes. Come on now. That's what Peter could be saying, saying the same thing. Let me show you something else. I am 35 years old. I'm a fine mama jammer. And I ain't got no man. And you gonna tell me fornication wrong? What that got to do with the situation? Don't you know I need a man? Don't you don't know the reality of the day that men today, they don't pay unless there's some coming their way? <laughs> Am I getting a little too deep on it? Is that too heavy? Did y'all just stumble over what I said? Now you're going to be thinking about what he said? Going to miss the revelation of what I'm trying to get you to see? That you reasoning away what God say is the way to prosper you, to give you hope and a future? You reasoning your own way? Go back to Isaiah 55 and 8. You got a way that you want to do it? And God telling you what you need to do? And then trust to come in church. Figure you're going to get one of the godly men. Do you not realize if you are a wreck, if God's plans are to prosper his children, don't you know he ain't given no man or no woman to no wreck? Because his plan is to prosper them. How he going to look like prospering a good man or a good woman, bring them up with somebody sorry like you? Get the revelation. But I was fine. I was 35. Look at what I got. I got a whole lot that a man would want. Yeah, he might want it, but he might not want to keep it. Amen. You got to understand the difference. Because sooner or later, 
You got to understand the laws of the universe. Gravity worketh. What you got to look for is what's on the inside. And if the inside is not clean, it don't matter what's on the outside. You got to get a revelation that when you get right with God, then now God can bring something right to you. Two rights coming together. Get the revelation. But reason adds it up. Say, I was 35. I needs me somebody. I'm tired of going home to a cold bed and sheets, they ain't got no warmth in it. Even though I do have an electric blanket, that ain't what I'm looking for. Can y'all hang with me for a little bit? Hold on. But see, some of y'all, you're missing the revelation because I don't believe no preacher ought to be talking like that. What you say? sister. They call this a church. <laughs> Peter could have said, what kind of preacher is he? Don't he know I ain't caught no fish last night? He up here preaching the good news. What that got to do with me and my circumstances? He could have allowed Jesus to be an offense. He was a stumbling block for so many. Don't you understand? That the, the cornerstone that the builders rejected became their stumbling block. You've got to understand, I'm trying to teach you to go beyond reason and try to go into revelation and understand reason should dictate to you that if I am truly a man of God, that God has a message no matter how I bring it to you. He called me to bring it in the way I'm supposed to bring it, but the way I bring it, you need to hear the revelation and not the reason. Because when you practice revelation seeking, you get revelation, and revelation gives solutions to your problem. But reason only puts a bigger mess for you. Let me show you reason. Genesis, third chapter, verse 1. That's what got us in this mess, was reason. Not revelation. God had said to Adam, of all the trees... In the garden, you can eat freely. Prosperity is what I give you. Whatever you need is all around you. Get revelation. Now, hear me, hear me, hear me. Get the revelation. Get the revelation. Everything you want, you can have. Except one thing. That one tree that's in the middle of the garden, that's the one I don't want you to eat from. Now, the serpent was more crafty, sneaky, conniving, scheming, underhanded, able to do things that, that were able to, wiggle his way through. Now, how was he scheming, crafty, and scheming and doing all this kind of stuff? He worked with reason. Reason that makes sense. Remember what he said, my ways are not your ways. Reason. Watch it. This is what screwed us all up. Reason. 